Right, time to update ourselves with some international news, possibly a bit more seriously than last week where we covered such important stories as Western Australia's hardcore biker gangs being forced to wear makeup in public. I'm waiting for the first story out of Perth, Australia, where police forcibly apply foundation to a Mongol or a Hell's Angel and then they themselves get chased out of town rather than the other way around. Anyway, on to more relevant matters, and you may remember last week that I was riding an absolutely loving Ducati's Multistrada V4. Great bike, but if you join me on our YouTube for some extra chat, including some gripes that I had about the bike, you'll remember me wishing that I could have my cake and eat it because I don't really need the 19-inch adventure-oriented front wheel, and so I love a 17-incher on the front, which would then offer me a lot more choice in terms of sticky rubber. Well, no sooner had I said that than Ducati announced the Pikes Peak edition of the Multistrada V4. Bikes may no longer be allowed to compete at the mountain climbing time trial, partly as a consequence of Carlin Dunn's 2019 death there on the Street Fighter V4, but Ducati is continuing to make a special edition model based on its winning history there with the Multistrada, and I, for one, am glad that they are. Well, this version has fulfilled my wish list with 17 inch rims at both ends instead of just the rear, a swap to a single side swing arm and forged alley wheels instead of cast. There's been a weight saving of four kilos along the way and apparently the suspension has some new settings to suit its sportier character. I hope it hasn't lost too much of that beautifully controlled extra suspension travel it had as a result of it being an adventure bike because I'm sure that was part of why it felt so good out on bumpy real-world roads. I can't wait to get a ride on this one though, and when I eventually grow up and get a proper job and salary, this will undoubtedly be the first bike that goes in my new garage. Let's stay with new models, but head from Italy to Japan and add that it's about time. Honda has announced a new touring road bike and we hope it gets imported to South Africa because there hasn't really been much in Honda's range for road tourers for a few years. Not since the likes of the VFRs disappeared or indeed the ST. The Goldwing has pretty much been holding the fort on its own. The NT1100 will return Honda to the touring realm, but I have to say that I am surprised by the form it's taken. Think about all the sport touring bikes on the market at the moment and think about the popular, successful ones and you will end up scrolling through a list that is primarily in the form of adventure style bikes. BMW's XRs, KTM's GT, Yamaha's Tracer, Triumph's Tiger Sport, Ducati's Multistradas, you get the idea. When I heard that this new Honda would be using the Africa Twins engine, I thought, hoped, we'd see something based on the manufacturer's concept that I saw at the EICMA Expo in 2019. But no, Honda was apparently distracting us with that concept, and what we have is a dedicated road bike styled along more traditional lines. I quite like the headlight treatment, but the rest of it is a bit... Uh, dull? To liven things up a bit, we have a stunning array of new colours. Isn't something I'm going to say in reality, because that just isn't the Honda way. So we have a very sensible silver, a restrained black, and a legal white, which is great if you want to play it being a bike cop. The parallel twin will make 101 horsepower, so it's a very modest power output given the capacity and the potential competitors. But combined with shower suspension, Honda claims it brings fantastic handling to the party. There will of course be a DCT version, which will undoubtedly prove to be very popular, though you can go for the standard version and then tick the auto blip option for a more traditional way of getting into some automation into your gear changes. The electronics package is similar to the Africa Twins, without the Enduro riding mode obviously, and the electronic dash is also a mixture of a small LCD display and a 6.5 inch TFT screen that will let you use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which I have to admit is very good indeed. One of the major things going for the Honda is its relative affordability. It will be cheaper than the base Africa Twin that retails for about 258,000 Rand in South Africa, so you could expect to see the NT1100 for perhaps a smidgen over 240,000. That seems like good value, but it doesn't really give it much of a, if any of a price advantage over the likes of Yamaha's Tracer or BMW's smaller XR, or even the Ducati Multistrada V2, 
all of which also make more horsepower, but a bit less torque given that they are all of a slightly smaller capacity. Before I move on from the Honda though, I'm going to have a moan about motorcycle marketing in general. We've used shots from a couple of Honda's videos showing footage of the bike, but we've been forced to cut out most of the NT1100's marketing videos, much as we do with many manufacturers these days, because they're irritating tosh. Over-artistic, meaningless, pretentious rubbish designed to, well, I don't know what exactly, other than get you pulling your hair out and yelling at the screen, show me the bike. Instead, you're forced to listen to a voiceover by some bloke who smokes 100 ciggies a day just to make sure he gets plenty of voiceover work. The right spot. The very right spot. As he tells you about something that is apparently deep and meaningful about him and his violin playing girlfriend as they head off in search of the perfect spot for her to play the definitive bit of string music to an audience of one, him. They're always perfectly coiffured and glowing with fresh, healthy beauty, which as we all know is exactly how we feel and look after spending eight hours riding in the heat of a summer's day, isn't it? I'd love just once for an average looking couple to get off a bike, sweaty and dirty, with hair that looks like it's been attacked by a rabid chimpanzee, and hobble around for a minute, rubbing their numb backsides before pronouncing in a squeaky voice, by heck, <laughs> that was a bloody long way, wasn't it? Me ass is killing me, but I tell you what, that's a good bike, that is. Yeah, I don't know why I went into a Geordie accent there, but anyway, the more I think about it, I'm setting Don on the project, I want to, realistic 30 second ad to act as a beacon of truth for all these bike manufacturers who think they have to employ beautiful models and frustrated poets to write the copy. Uh, yeah, got a bit carried away there. So after new bikes from Europe and Japan, let's take a quick hop over to India now where Royal Enfield has announced that it will be making a 650 Himalayan model. Given that it is an adventure model and undoubtedly an affordable one, then it should have relevance to the adventure-obsessed South African market. Or at least it would if we had an importer in South Africa. Surely someone's working on that? A bit of background, since the brand hasn't been available in South Africa for a while, the company started making a smaller 400cc Himalayan model five years ago, and with a 21-inch front wheel and rugged build quality, it has proved popular wherever it's been sold. However, it doesn't punt out much more than 20 horsepower, so obviously those who want a Royal Enfield adventure bike have been waiting for the company to make a model using its new 47 horsepower 650cc parallel twin engine. Well, the Indian manufacturer has just made that announcement, which is good news, but unfortunately it comes with some caveats. The first is that you will have to wait another three years because it's not planned to arrive until the back end of 2024. And even more unfortunate than that is that it will be more of a soft rotor with a 19 inch front wheel and not a true 21 inch wearing adventure proper machine. Still, it could yet prove a popular model. At least the weight will give a local importer time to set up a dealer network across the country to take advantage of the tens of thousands of sales that definitely await, possibly. What may have slightly more chance of making it to South Africa, if the rumours are true, is this potential 650 adventure bike from huge Chinese manufacturer QJ Motors, which also happens to sell its wares around the world under the Benelli banner. Benelli comes into SA via Puzi of Bikers Warehouse fame, so if the plans come to fruition, there could be an affordable 650 V-twin adventure bike on its way to South Africa. Again, at this stage, it's a lot of guesswork on my part, but it is at least a remote possibility. I'm gonna share this little gem of a video from YouTube. If you want to see more of it, and if there's even a hint of engineering curiosity in you, then you will, you need to get yourself on YouTube, type in TRO Designs, and head over to their channel where you will find a video entitled Transparent Engine Cylinder. They've used 33 frames per second slow-mo filming to capture the action inside an acrylic cylinder that they manufactured themselves 
and it gives you a peek inside a cylinder for the first time and allows you to see what happens inside the combustion chamber. If you've ever wondered how your engine contains those explosions and converts them into power for you to enjoy, then please head over there and support their channel. And that, as they say, is that. Plenty of happenings on the international scene and it makes me excited for the upcoming EICMA Expo in Milan, which I'll be attending for the bike show. I'm hoping to see many of these new models and a few that we don't yet know about. And of course, I'll be bringing them to you here as soon as is humanly possible. But in the meantime, we'll see you again next week.